hello. I'm Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> How would you laugh? <laughs> you laugh? <laughs> Which is very sensual. <laughs> hello. Well, maybe oh. don't say bloody disaster. Right before we start. <laughs> I'm Tyler Riley, cop and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and we're I'm just... Tristan Miller, saucy sleuth. <laughs> I'm Melissa Maley, the spy, and welcome to the Amateur Detective Club. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Calling to order. Yeah. And I now call this meeting to order. Gosh okay. darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect I've had the job. least experience in showing this show. I've done it like four times in today's show. <laughs> <laughs> I just said my name. I thought we were all going to introduce ourselves. <laughs> <sighs> no, I'm, I'm done. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash adcpod and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download a title for free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash adcpod because Audible, unlike my co-hosts, is always there for me. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. I just downloaded a bunch of... Uh, books on Audible. <laughs> Sorry, it was like internet pornography. <laughs> <laughs> when I was went to Just watch, uh, I'm I uh, went to watch an episode of Poirot. Yeah, and uh, my boyfriend, who was still asleep probably at the time, uh, thought I said porno. No, I'm gonna watch a porno. <laughs> I, I was like, "Are you still asleep?" And he's like, "Yeah." Uh. <laughs> and I said, "Okay, I'm gonna watch." Poirot, which he heard as porno, and went, okay. That's right. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's nice to be accepted. Yeah. But yeah, I just downloaded a bunch of things that I haven't listened to yet, um, but I downloaded some Amy Poehler, Yes, Please. Uh, all right. I downloaded Michelle Obama's book, mm-hmm. uh, Becoming, and I downloaded uh, The Devil in the White City uh, by Eric Larson. Hmm. And I guess tell my autobiography. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one is uh, crime and murder related, not Tyler's, I assume. <laughs> but but the actual book I downloaded, I haven't listened to them yet, but I'm excited about it. Anyway, mm. yeah, you can pre-order at uh, the new Black Panther Party dot <laughs> That's for Tyler. Uh, <laughs> not a real thing, as far as I know. Uh, the new Black. Yeah. Blackpanther.gov. Dot net. Dot edu. Dot edu. gov shut us down. They yeah, shut yeah, us down that makes sense. Real quick. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so, we got an interesting one for you today. Yeah, so, story time. Um, Ooh, settle in. <laughs> my, it's pretty short. Um, <laughs> it's as interesting as it is long, which is the correct ratio. Um, oh. My computer crashed while I was on my tour, and we lost the original episode of this. So we have to now remember a book that we all read about a month and a half ago. Yep. So this should be real fun, fam. It's going to be so confusing and probably mostly goofy. We're talking about ABC murder today, not the Mm -hmm. new Amazon (laughs) series. (laughs) God. That we haven't watched yet. Have no. you watched it? No, I haven't. Okay. I, I refuse to do so. Wait, what? No, we're, we're no. Okay, we're, we're gonna do this. it. Okay, I'm gonna. If we have to watch have every relapse. incarnation of Murder of the Orient Express, <laughs> we are going to watch. <laughs> As for oh me. God, I just, I'm gonna just have a relapse. I'm gonna be just. I have to be high as a kite to the process. Just be no, John no. Malkovich, okay? <laughs> it's not that hard. Hey, hey. If Brad Pitt can. T- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about? John Malkovich is playing Poirot in an Amazon adaptation of of uh, ABC Murders, and oh. his That's accent. That's me posting it where I got called out about not remembering every Agatha Christie book ever. Oh, written. I see. <laughs> I uh, we love you. Uh, I, all it was, yes, we're we we're do. just yeah. we're just having, having some fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but John Malkovich's accent in that trailer. 
Oh. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> it's... And he doesn't have a mustache. He has, like, a goatee. It doesn't make what? any sense. He it, has a stash. It is a light stash. It is not the most glorious mustache that the world has ever seen, which is how Poirot is described, I believe, in the murder of the Orient Express. Like, he's supposed to have, like, a really the, pronounced yeah, mustache. It's big. It, yeah, it's big. It's a big thing. It's big sum. Yeah. Sometimes they call it mustaches. Yeah, because he... And that's why I think Kenneth Branagh opted for, technically, four strands of hair out of his face. <laughs> Uh, Jay-Z Ridley said this very funny thing I'm like yeah the mustache was second on the call sheet <laughs> amazing yeah uh, but yeah I just okay we will watch it but yes uh, okay so we read a month and a half ago uh, a, a book called The ABC Murders by British writer Agatha Christie featuring her characters Hercule Poirot Arthur Hastings and Chief Inspector Jap uh, anyway yes so, um, this is a book about, am I, oh, okay. It's really difficult reading this book, uh, as a dyslexic person. <laughs> the title alone was confusing. <laughs> the cab murder. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Is that what dyslexia is like? It's just like anagrams? Yeah, a lot of the time. Okay. Um, and then, like, a lot of the times if I misspell something, I, like, I have no idea whether or not it's misspelled. Like, I will put... And I can't recall which one is right. Like, friend, um, I'll put F-R-I-E-N-D. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so I'll put F-R-E-N-D, and I'll, like, I have no idea which one is accurate or yeah. right. Mm. Thank God for spell check. Yeah. Because um, if I was, even, like, 20 years ago, people would be like, oh, the boy's stupid. Right. <laughs> They're just would be like, he's Isn't mad crazy? dumb. Yeah. Yeah. It's really unfortunate that that happened. But I am glad that people figured out you're smart anyway. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, returning from South America, Arthur Hastings meet with, meets with his old friend, Hercule Poirot, at his new flat in London. Poirot shows him a mysterious letter that he has received signed ABC that details a crime that is to be committed very soon, which he suspects will be a murder. Two more letters of the same nature soon arrive to his flat, each prior to a murder being carried out by ABC and then committed in alphabetical order as follows. Alice Asher, killed in her tobacco shop in Andover. Elizabeth Betty Barnard, a flirty waitress, killed on the beach at Bexhill. And Sir Carmichael Clark, a wealthy man, killed at his home in Churchston. Each murder, in each murder, an ABC railway guide is left beside the victim. Okay. I mean, that's a very interesting summary for, like, the first... Half of the book. I know. <laughs> Yeah, so what did we remember that we liked about the first half of the book? Well, first, I have a best friend named Cameron Clark, and I now yeah. want his child to be named Carmichael. Yeah. When and if that ever happens. Yes. Yes. Um, so I do remember how, do you like, remember? oddly... <laughs> Sorry, I'm already <laughs> off track. <laughs> I do remember how, like, oddly... I'm reading into this. Uh, how oddly turned on Poirot was about oh, yeah. murder. He was mad horny He's, for this murder. Oh my gosh. Mad, he wanted mad this horny murder. murder. My favorite so podcast. <laughs> Fourth title of a children's book. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. But okay. So here's the thing. What this appears to be is someone like a... Sorry, I just need, yeah. need something in uh, Tristan's office. Uh, oh, really? What do you need? Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I hit it with my knee. It was a tripod. Anyway. Um, Did you trip you on that? What need? Then? Okay. Mm. I'm there now. Yeah. I'm there. Okay. Okay. We got it. Um, but yeah. No, he gets very excited because it seems like it's not like someone who's in for, you know, Typical murder reasons, you know? Like, someone isn't doing this in a in the way that most people murder. The way that most people murder is like, I need something out of this situation. <laughs> this is like a serial killer type profile. Yeah. Where yeah. they're like, I just want to murder because I think it's great. 
And um, boy, I just love killing. Boy, I just love killing. Exactly. And <laughs> that's one of the best characters from Rick and Morty. Kerbopulous uh, Michael. He's just an assassin. He's just, and that's what he says one time. Huh. He's just like, boy, I just love killing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Here I go. And this is, you know, so I understand where Poirot is fascinated by this. Yeah, yeah. He's, Absolutely. And he's doing it in a very, you know, methodical way. Yeah. It's very methodical, too. And Poirot likes his methods and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, first name, last name, city, everything starts with the same letter. It's in order. Um... So it's like a puzzle for Poirot. It's like a murder puzzle. And, yeah. Two of his favorite things. Yeah, truly. Exactly, combined. It's his great passion. Two great tastes to go great together. Yeah. And, like, Hastings, I feel, like, is just excited to just be doing something with Poirot again. Yeah, it's so cute. Visiting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's already something up. Yeah. He even says in the introduction, it's like, man, I hope something's up. And then <laughs> that he's, yeah. Yeah. he's just excited to get the gang back together. It's really sweet. Yes, it is. Um, so they're kind of running all around the country trying yeah. to thwart these murders before they happen. Um, and they're not able to. Yeah. So and these first three. Poirot has an interesting attitude. Uh, this first couple of chapters of like, people are like, are you going to try and stop? him and he's like i don't know enough to do that people are gonna die right and they're like yeah. you can't just do that and he's like what they, you have, don't have a choice right i have nothing to go on <laughs> yeah. yeah and i also just love how like everyone is like you have to do something Paro. and Paro, like you're also detective do your damn job yeah. how about that <laughs> it's like i'm retired yeah, technically I should be doing, what yeah. is it, root vegetables? Like, yeah. Root ma- uh, vegetable, vegetable marrows, marrows. yeah. Which yes. are root vegetables, indeed. Um, zucchini. Zucchini. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's my drag name, Zucchini. <laughs> zucchini. Oh, my God. Well, it seems like Faro was going a little zoo crazy <laughs> oh. when left to his own devices. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yes. Uh, so, along the way, we collect this cast of characters and that they form, like, the Legion. Right. To figure out these murders. But wait, nothing beat his oh. old life. Oh. Oh. That's a real vegetable. Didn't <laughs> care about it. Care it about it. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. You got it. Turn up for what? <laughs> <laughs> Set <Zaparo. laughs> I cannot abide this house music. <laughs> Definitely. These things, it is too loud. <laughs> So we get... Well, parsnip it in the bed. No! <laughs> the last, last, last it's fine, one. it's fine. We weren't done yet. I, I tried too early. So, okay, the victims that we have are Alice Asher. She's the first victim. She's mm. an elderly woman, no children. She is the owner of a tobacco shop in Andover. Great. Betty Barnard, um, the second victim, a young... Here, This is what uh, Wikipedia says. A uh, young, flirtatious, part-time waitress. She's more than that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> She's more of that than, than to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then Sir Carmichael Clark, yeah. uh, the third victim, who's a rich, childless old man. I love the name Carmichael because it's like, you couldn't decide on just Michael. <laughs> yeah. You wanted like another name plus yeah. Michael. What's that? Carmichael, the bad dog and all dogs go to heaven. I don't remember that. It was too scary for me to watch as a kid. That's that's, honestly, that's fair. It's there's just, hell in that movie. The, it's Don, the Don Bluth like children's film that we grew up with, like they're like Anastasia. There was a whole Rasputin underworld bit that got like a look. Yeah, he just he went to. He was not place. afraid. Yeah, he was not afraid to go dark, which is appreciated, yeah. but also like is spooky. Yeah. So. The other folks we have in this. Oh, right. <laughs> right. oh because Carl Michael was the yeah, 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 engine yeah, 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 that yeah. I was on. <laughs> My bad. Uh, is we've got Franklin Clark, who is Carmichael's brother, and who Franklin Clark, for some reason, throughout the book as I was reading, was Cameron in my brain. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. Which was That's weird. Fun. I I love that casting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, 
is, yeah, he's the aggrieved younger brother um, and his immediate successor. Ooh. Um, successor. Uh, yep. Uh, assisting Poirot in the investigation, <laughs> responsible for inspiring Poirot to form the group. And then there's Mary Drower, who is Asher's niece. Who I imagined is Mary Berry, despite her being young. Great. Uh, Megan Barnard, Betty's elder, sensible, comparatively down-to-earth sister. So then we get uh, Donald Fraser. Uh, Played by Hugh Fraser in my mind. So there's two of them. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, Betty's would-be fiancé and a temperamental man, who's, of course, everyone thinks that he killed her because it's always the fiancé. Who's mad all the time. (laughs) And then there's Thora Gray, who is Sir Carmichael Clark's attractive young assistant. Um, and uh, other people we've got of course uh, Alice Asher's uh, alcoholic and estranged husband Franz who is the initial suspect in that murder of Christoph course. Salt yes probably um though he's described as big and I like this idea of like big Christoph Waltz like if you just blew him up in photoshop <laughs> Yeah. Should yeah. be like the size of Shrek, per se. We yeah. have technology for that. Um, and then, of course, Sir Carmichael's wife, Charlotte Clark, um, this is my favorite description, suffering from terminal cancer, rendered delusional or irritated by the medi- <laughs> medicine she takes. <laughs> well, which is it? That's a huge difference. It's like Played honestly, by Cicely Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, just irritated. Yeah. Because... And I don't think it's the medication. I think it's the fact that she's dying of cancer. Perhaps. And she has all this stuff to deal with. It's like, I'm, I'm just done not having it anymore. And that is her whole attitude, which is... Understandable. And, frankly, correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Frankly, I thought that was the brother. Oh, boy. Uh-huh. So... Oh, boy, folks. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we've got this legion, and uh, af- one key similarity between the murders is established um, after meeting with Lady Clark, the irritated lady who I love. Um, on the day of each murder, a man selling silk stockings has appeared at or near each crime scene. Despite this information, Poirot has doubts about why the letters were sent to him rather than the police or the newspapers. I mean, that is true. Uh, and why the third letter misspelled Poirot's address, causing a delay in his receipt of it. Ooh, dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. That exasperated sigh was because I just remembered what my semicolon title to this oh, okay. was. Okay, ABC oh, Murders. Okay. Semicolon. Get the cussed out. Or get cussed out. That's what it was. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ABC sends his next letter directing everybody to Doncaster. Doncaster? Doncaster? Don, yeah, Doncaster. Right. Doncaster. Doncaster, really? Because everything in... It's Gloucester, Gloucester or... Uh, or I'm sorry, Gloucester. It's Gloucester. And uh, Lancashire. And, like, it's always, you know, you kind of lose the end of it. But so, Doncaster, anyway. Where it is suspected the next murder will occur at the race meeting the next day? I yeah, there's yeah. a big uh, foot race, eh? Foot race? I thought it was. I imagined a foot race. I actually imagined you doing a foot race. Oh, I, I thought it was a horse it's race. A, yeah. A horse race? Yeah. Well, I can imagine you doing a horse race too. That's the fun thing about imagination, folks. You can right. anything up there. You ever think about that? You can imagine anything. Anything you want. Mm. Take a brief pause, listeners, <laughs> and imagine. imagine something. Something pleasant. Any happy little thought? And we're back. <laughs> uh, uh, however, the murderer strikes at a cinema instead. Oh. And the victim's name does not match the alphabetical pattern of the other killings, which is very frustrating. Can I tell you, I am mad about this to this yeah. day. Yeah, I just like, it hurts my brain to think about that. It's like you just goofed so hard. I'm done with this book. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I was just upset. Like, can you imagine, like, going out to, like, a cinema? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it just, like, um, I imagine, like, they're just, like, on a really bad day, and, like, things just aren't going well, and, like, and you get murdered? Like, that's just... <laughs> I was waiting for the post credit scene, and I got stabbed. Right? Yes, no, that is also true, but, like, it is uh, very frustrating that the pattern didn't stay consistent. Yeah. <sighs> 
That's fair, I guess. <laughs> um, the police soon get a tip off about um, the man linked to the murders, uh, the traveling salesman of the stockings, uh, whose name is Alexander Bonaparte Cust. Ooh. Which is an amazing name. Mm. Uh, he is epileptic, and he suffers from memory blackouts and constant anguishing. No, it says agonizing. Sure, anguishing is fine, too. Um, anguish-inducing? Sure, I like that. Headaches as a result of a head injury during the First World War, or as they called it then. The, the Great, Great War. War. Yeah. Uh, he got shot in the head and lived, so that's cool, but also it makes sense that he would... Have a headache, chronic migraines from getting shot in the head. Poor guy. No, there was a Unless thing he's killing people. where a man got stabbed yeah. in the head, Nick and like he was still like able like to walk yep. himself. Who was to the, the hospital? What's it's his name? Amazing. It's, yeah. He got a hit with a railroad spike. Oh, that guy too. Yeah. Oh, so two times is. Oh, yeah. This man was stabbed like with a knife. Phineas Gage is the guy yeah. who got stabbed with a railroad spike, and he is in all of the psychology textbooks because it talks about how he basically, like, he lived, but his personality completely changed. And, like, he had been, like, kind of a mild-mannered guy, and then he became, like, rage-filled and angry, and much like, you know, CTE will do to you, and some Chris Benoit kind of stuff happening, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Personalities are so fragile. I mean, uh, they're not until they are. Like, (laughs) I think you could say that about anything, Melissa. It's certainly not men. (laughs) (laughs) That was a joke. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, I did. Just want to make that clear for those listening. Oh, and just to be clear, none of us actually think murder is a good idea. We're making jokes about things. Specifically, fictional murder. Fictional murder's fine. Yes. You can imagine anything. Right. (laughs) But you don't have to take my word for it. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah. uh, Sidebar corner. Um, (laughs) Sidebar sidebar corner. That's very redundant of me. Sidebar corner. Well, sidebar uh, could just be in the side of the room. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the corner. Oh, but it's a yeah. corner with a so sidebar, it's, it's and you can work. get some, okay. side some bar cocktails. Corner. That is what I'm calling like my the corner pocket, uh, like a pool table or something. Yeah, it's, on it's the for side. it's yeah. for tangents and cocktails. The sidebar. I'm opening this place. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so they find Cust, and he flees his apartment, but oh. upon. <laughs> Arriving at the end of a police station where he is taken into custody. There we go. (laughs) Custody, yeah. (laughs) What did I say? Custody. Because cust is in the name and the word. (laughs) I'm like, did I missay it? No. Okay. (sighs) Apart from claiming that a stalking firm hired him, he lacks any memory of committing the murders, but believes he must be guilty of them because he had been at the cinema where the last murder occurred. And found blood on his sleeve and a knife in his pocket after he had left. Oh, that's so scary. I know, right? Can you imagine? Poor guy. Um, The police learn that the firm in question never hired Cust. Uh, Their search of his room turns up an unopened box of railway guides, the ABC railway guides. And the typewriter and fine paper used in ABC's letters while the knife is discovered in the hallway outside his room where he dropped it. Poirot doubts Cust's guilt because of his memory blackouts, and especially because he had a solid alibi for the Bexhill murder. Mm. It's just wild. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. So then they have a meeting with the Legion, which is... So dramatic. Uh, The drama is things, the human drama. And... Okay, yeah, so, sorry, the, I don't like the way that this, sorry, mm-hmm. Wikipedia. Um, I'm calling anyone from Wikipedia who knows, like, people who write and update Wikipedia articles, update, updaters, updaters, someone help this page, because Please. this is a weird summary, don't make today. and it, like, the, the <laughs> next thing is the reveal of the murderer in this yeah. summary, and it's not a good time. Yeah. Um, 
I would like to say something. Yes, yeah. turn to Australian for a second. I would like to say something. I think you should. Um, what's also very interesting through the uh, the entirety of this book is everyone is like, this guy is a madman. He's clearly insane, and and one of the reasons Poirot doesn't exactly believe it's this guy that they caught cussed is because he did send a letter but it didn't like one of the letters didn't match the previous format Mm -hmm. and it didn't make sense and the whole thing about the serial killer is it's so methodical yeah and one of his mantras is like no there's there's logic to it Mm -hmm. and then there was a break in the logic which really allows them to find out what's going on with these crimes but it's i think very interesting like the fact that he does like a cop to like even people who have like mental health issues there's still a logic to it like it makes yeah. sense to them it's consistent just because right. it's not how most people see it doesn't mean it's like yeah random and i mean killers their emos can oh, no. Killer, I hardly know her. That's terrible. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty terrible. Uh, but killers often have, uh, like, sometimes their MO will change. Yeah. But in certain ways, not like this. And what happens in the cinema is that a man is killed, but it ends up being, and I don't know why it doesn't reference it. It's so weird the way this is laid out. Um, so in the cinema, uh, this guy, what is his name? Um, oh, George Earlsfield is a barber who is stabbed at the cinema uh, in Doncaster, Doncaster, whatever. Um, when it seems like the intended victim was actually a guy named Roger Downs, who's a school teacher visiting the cinema um, and finds Earlsfield's body so like they're sitting next to each other as right. well so earl's field you know was not the intended victim uh downs was but the killer was getting sloppy basically it's just like uh gotta get one of these guys dead and <laughs> didn't really uh didn't really pay that much attention which does not seem like it's not the same mo and like the movie theater is weird because it's a public yeah. space like while a lot of people are around so there's much more room for error it does not seem like this our guy is it's, it doesn't make sense anyway um just sloppy hashtag yeah. not my murder <laughs> so Poirot then, like, has a revelation and figures out who it is. Yeah, pretty much. Like, that's really the next part, honestly. Um, yeah, yeah. So break? So break. Give me a break. Give me a break. No? No? no. I was I was waiting for you to finish your thought. Was it supposed to join me. in? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> break off the a piece, piece of that, that kid. Murder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello. This is Tristan Miller, the Saucy Sleuth, and I have a few things I'd like to say. Number one, please do go to audibletrial.com slash adcpod and use that free month to get a free audiobook. Bunch of great ones there. I'm in the middle of the Mr. Rogers biography. It is excellent. Also, you're going to go to patreon.com slash Tristan J. Miller to support this program and other programs like it. You can follow me at Tristan J. Miller one on Twitter, Tyler at at it's Tyler Riley, and Melissa at Melissa J. Maley. That's pretty much it. Um oh right, we're on the Scavengers Network, an excellent network of various internet programming for your fine consumption. You can check out historical hotties, spooky spouses, and a bunch of other alliterative podcasts there they also have video content we're constantly updating you and the website to keep you informed yeah that's it uh, i hope you enjoy the rest of the show uh, it's this one was really fun y'all it was uh, I, we had a blast okay bye love you 
Uh, okay, so we have our big parlor reveal with the Legion. Uh, yeah, and Poirot um, says that Franklin Franklin Clark is actually the ABC murderer. Jacques. Which is surprising considering the fact that it seemed like the work of a serial killer. So why would he want to kill all these people? <sighs> the fact is he really didn't want to kill all these people. Um, he wanted to kill his brother. Okay. Um, so, so Frank did it, right? Yeah. Franklin did it, yeah. Did Frankie. It. Mm-hmm. Frankie C. So, okay. With Lady Clark dying, he was afraid that his brother Carmichael would marry somebody else and that he wouldn't get his money. Yeah. It's always about money. Stupid money. Um, <laughs> Listen, as a capitalist, I love money. I hate it. It's, it's dumb. Um, I know I need it, but it's annoying. And we'd like more of it. Yeah, no, we do. Go to audibletrial.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes, he decides that since his um, brother could remarry... Um, he needs to kill him before his wife dies so that all their money will go to him. Franklin. All your cash belong to us. Yeah. Um, so that he will be the inheritor. However, um, he has a chance encounter with Cust at a pub. Um, and then... They like, like they lock eyes across the room. Oh, exactly. Man. And he's Not like, worth stuttering over. <laughs> He's like, this guy is the guy that will get me out of this and still allow me to kill my brother. <laughs> he disguised his crime as part of a serial killing. Having created the letters Poirot would receive, Franklin set up Cust with his job, giving him the typewriter and other items Franklin, Franklin would use to frame him for the murderers. Murders. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. A uh, suggestion by Hastings makes clear that the third letter was misaddressed intentionally so that Franklin would not be thwarted uh, or interrupted by the police. Franklin then followed Cust to the cinema, committed the last murder, and planted the knife on him as he left. So Franklin's like, nah, this is n- nonsense. But he panics because Poirot says that there's a fingerprint that yeah. matches his on the typewriter key. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then Franklin attempts to commit suicide with his own gun only to find that Poirot has emptied it with the help of a pickpocket yeah which is so gangster it's so cool (laughs) this guy just pulls out what (laughs) he pulls out a gun tries to shoot it and then he's like ah god beans beans (laughs) oh poop um direct quote um (laughs) But yeah, so... um, I'm sorry, Tyler, did you not like me calling it gangster? Is that bad? I just, I don't think it was, but we'll get into it. Okay. Okay. Um, And and then then for some reason, Poirot is like, ah, you, Donald and Megan, you should get together, and they do. Yeah. Um, (laughs) He's a regular... Never mind. Matchmaker. Um, Dolly, Dolly from Hello, Dolly. Gallagher. There we go. Yeah. Tell me by Gallagher. Um, Thank you. And then Cust tells Poirot that the press have made him an offer for his story, which is great. Um, so he'll be set, poor guy. Um, Poirot suggests that he demand a higher price and mm-hmm. that his headaches may have arisen from his spectacles, not, you know, getting shot or stabbed in the head, whatever. Uh, once alone, Poirot tells Hastings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the visual of getting stabbed in the head. <laughs> Is both horrifying and hilarious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just like, because you know, you have those costume, Halloween costumes, yeah, you know, yeah. like an uh, arrow yeah. through the head. Yeah. yeah. Just like, yeah. Yeah. like um, what, guys? I'm fine. And then everybody's gone, and poor I was like, hey, Hastings, guess what? That fingerprint? <laughs> it was a bluff. Uh, totally wasn't there. But I got him. Um, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so what do we think of this book? Okay. Um, from what I remember of our original episode that we recorded, I like this. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Um, but I remember liking this book a lot because of the fact that it's really interestingly written in as much as you have the first person Hastings parts. 
and then parts that Hastings is not around for, and he pieces together after the fact that are right. done in third person um, that follow Cust. Yeah. Um, however, I could tell that it wasn't him because otherwise we wouldn't have spent time on it. You know, um, so I had no idea who it was up until the very end, and that made it very enjoyable yes. for me. That is fun. I remember really enjoying all the interactions between Poirot and Hastings. I thought Inspector Chrome was kind of superfluous as a character. You could have just had yeah. Jap do his normal Jappy thing. I mean, I didn't even mention him at all in the uh, like the recap. I don't think yeah. because like he was there. I mean, I guess the Inspector who dis. Yeah. He has some interaction with Poirot that's kind of interesting, but it's not essential. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so, but I think, I still think I give it like an eight and a half or nine out of ten. I really remember enjoying this book. And I think it also had to do with the fact that I physically read it. And yes. I could go at my own pace, um, which, and the chapters were very short, which I appreciate. Yeah, short chapters, great, great thing. Um, you heard it here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Short chapters, great things. Yes. <laughs> Walmart. That'll be my t-shirt. Um, <laughs> Short chapters, great thing. Um, so I, huh, I actually would have liked it better if it had turned out to be a true serial killer kind of thing, yeah. and I was kind of disappointed that it didn't go down that road. Um, I think I'd give it like. Six and a half, seven. Okay. Um, because I just find that fascinating, and I haven't seen Poirot deal with that, and I really, really would love to. Um, I it's kind of not Agatha's style, I guess. I mean, I haven't. There's always a motive. There's always a reason for everything, other than you know, I just like killing. Um, so I guess it would be a huge break with how she does things. But I mean, I think that'd be very interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would also like to mention there are some, like, uh, interesting conversations surrounding mental health in this book, yes. with some of which are aggravating and some of which are not. And I think it's really interesting that she wrote uh, Poirot to be sympathetic to this person. That's um, very nice. Yeah, it was very interesting. And at one point, Hastings <laughs> accuses basically Poirot of, of also having compulsions and he's like no I'm not I'm fine I'm just uptight it's fine and it's like listen Poirot it's okay it's okay that you have a mental illness yeah we all do you know it's a jungle out there yeah disorder and confusion everywhere but no one seems to care but I do hey who's in charge here Adrian Monk Ab what is it uh, no I, I believe that Charles is in charge actually oh I see there you go <laughs> Uh, characters welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh, Tyler, what'd you think? Oh. Uh, I remember giving it a high rating originally. I no longer... <gasps> you rescind? I rescind my higher... <gasps> oh. Uh, I think I gave it like a 7 or an 8 or something like that originally. Mm. But because of the fact that it's only been a month and I remember so little about this <laughs> <before>. <laughs> That's yeah. why it's no you know what? In house. It's not as impressionable as mm. I thought. Which is interesting because it's one of her more famous Poirot stories. There's had been a lot yeah. of adaptations of it. There have been quite a few. Like I feel like I remember Murder on the Muse more than I remember mm. this book. Mm. Um, I I still liked it. Uh, yeah. You know, it's not Murder for Christmas. <laughs> um, <laughs> my problem Whoa. was much like <laughs> Melissa like I was really hoping for like a serial killer situation especially because how horny for murder everyone seemed to be at the top of the book yeah um, but uh, the crime also didn't like satisfy me like it didn't make sense to me that you're like you honestly need money want money and like that's the whole motivation behind the killing for Franklin Yet he spends so much money on this scheme. Like, he hires someone full-time, buys... <laughs> That's such a good point. Buys silk you gotta stockings spend from spend money a, to make money, dog. And you're buying... Like, you're buying fucking silk stockings from, like, a wholesaler or something. Oh, God. That's true. Just invest. 
And then, you know, you end up murdering the wrong person in the end because they went to the cinema instead of the track. If you're spending all this money, just buy them a ticket to the track. And, like, Mm -hmm. say you won, like, a contest or something. Like, just lie. Yeah, just do the thing to make it make sense. It's tomfoolery. Gosh, regular murderers should not try to do a serial killer's job. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Murderers, stay in your lane. Yeah. (laughs) Is what this boils down to. Uh, All um, right. How many mustaches? I... Six. Six stashes. So mm-hmm. an average of seven? I guess. I yeah. think so. Makes sense. I mean, I think that's right. correct, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will say, uh, you gave me an idea when you were talking, Tristan. Oh, good. Uh, when you said Jack Hughes. Yes. Picture this. Okay? A detective mm-hmm. named Jack. Mm-hmm. Jack Hughes is the name <laughs> of the program. That's very fun. Boom. Um, I... Always, I had a, a joke a while back, a tweet, if you will, of a <laughs> a detective in a hot tub, a jacuzzi. Oh. oh, I like it. I'm sorry, I knocked things over on your desk while you were making a joke. It's fine. It <laughs> happens like all the as time. Like a like murder or detective talk show, a la like James Brown hot tub. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too hot for the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that we're done with this one, which is how we end all of our episodes. Yeah, okay. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) I'm adding the pressure to cut. Yeah. Okay. What what if I had something else to say? I mean, I don't. (laughs) But what if I did? I now call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to a close. Careful, Sam. What, what? Great.